All right, let's read together the word of God, Psalm 23 and Romans 12, 4 through 8. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows and leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. This is the word of God for the people of God. At this time, we will hear our message from Reverend Shauna Vanell from the Chaddock Children's Home. Morning, everyone. Before I get started here, um, I have a question for you. I see all the banners. Does anybody here know why we do banners in churches? It's, it's, I, I, I just have this little nugget because I kind of went on a, a several years ago, about 10 years ago, I was like really curious about what banners meant and like why we were doing them in churches because I go into Methodist churches all across the conference and a lot of them have banners. And their word banner is actually only referenced a couple of times in scripture, but where it is is in Song of Solomon and there is a line that says, the banner over me is love. So just so you know that, we put other scriptures on the banners, and that's a good thing to do. But really the idea is for each of your kids and for each of you coming in these doors to know that the banner that's flying over you, you are in a place where God loves you. The picture um, that comes to mind, I'm a football girl, is like the team, you know, going out before the field, what that represents, you know, whether it's a big I for University of Iowa or whatever your team might be, that, that banner flies and it like just shows the world who you are and what you're about. And for us as Christians, the banner that is always flying over us, whether we see it or not, is the banner that says, you are loved. The banner over you is love. So I just wanted to start today with something a little different, and um, the, the banners kind of led me in that direction. So I'm Shauna. I am from Chaddock. I am so great to, glad to be with you this morning. Um, and my first question is, how many of you know about Chaddock, know a little bit about Chaddock? A little bit, a little bit. So I'm going to start by just kind of giving you a really brief introduction of Chaddock, really short and brief. We are a Methodist ministry. We've been around since 1853. We are a child-serving agency in Quincy, Illinois, and we serve over 400 kids daily. We have a foster care program that serves about 300 kids. We have Chaddock School that is a therapeutic day school. And we have a residential program. And that's really what I'm going to focus on today. But I am going to be around 
all morning. If I say anything that you have questions about or you want to know more about, please stop and ask me. I love my kids. I love my job. And I am so happy to talk to anyone that would want to know more about, about anything I'm going to say today, okay? So, um, so today, as I said, we have over 400 kids. And so there is never a shortage of things to talk about at Chaddock. There's never a shortage of stories to tell. There's never a shortage of things I could say. But the truth is today, I, I am here for a very special reason. And I am here a little bit even out of my element. I've been preaching and a pastor for five years, and I am a walker and a talker. I move around because the very first term I, time I went out to preach, I was in a kind of a cathedral kind of church in Peoria, never spoken in public before, let alone preaching. And I was really nervous, and I was behind the pulpit, and I'm like, okay, I got through it. I got, got to the end of the service. I got through it. And I was feeling really relieved, and there was this little old lady, she was probably 90 years old at the receiving line, and she grabbed me by the elbow, and she says, honey, that was wonderful, but it was like hearing the voice of God, because I could only see the top of your head. (laughs) And so I learned really quickly to not stand behind a pulpit. Today, I'm actually out of my comfort zone, because what I'm going to share with you I am going to stand behind the pulpit because, for a couple of reasons, A, because it's important enough that I want to come to you, and it's, it's, it's not about me walking and talking, and it's not about me preaching. I have something significant to ask, and I want to do it in a way that honors God and honors the position he has put me in. And so um, I'm going to be back here a little bit. If I get out, it's just because that's my comfort zone, okay? So I'm going to do my best to stay back here. So with over 400 children served daily at Chadak, there's always a lot going on. Today, I want to ask you and talk about something that actually started about a few months ago for me, about four or five months ago, actually. And I was at a graduation party, and um, all of our kids, we have 50 that live with us on campus all the time, and they're there for about 18 months, the kids that live with us. So I was at a graduation party of one of our kids. He was getting ready to go home, and like most of our graduation parties, they kind of follow a similar theme and there's always cake and there's punch and there's always gifts and there's always a lot of silliness and there's always a lot of tears and there's always this room full of people that come together to really celebrate and honor our kids their accomplishment you see Alex on his graduation party he had been with us 18 months He came to us when he was eight years old. And by the time he was leaving, he was 10. Now, in Alex's early life, like all of the kids that live at Chaddock, he had suffered severe abuse and neglect. He suffered it to the point that it really, um, actually, well, it, it technically changed the way his brain developed. And this little boy was left with an inability to to have healthy relationships, an inability to trust anyone and form a bond. This little boy was born into a situation that all of us would never imagine, never want to imagine. This little boy went on to be adopted by a wonderful family who loved him with all their heart and gave him everything they could possibly give him, gave him all the love, gave him everything they knew how to give him. And yet, like all of my kids at Chaddock, it wasn't enough. Alex had had been in their home and had they had tried to make him part of the family and in their minds and in their hearts he was part of the family he was their son 
They had tried to get him help. They had taken him to therapist after therapist. He had had two. He had actually had about four mental health hospital stays before he was recommended for residential care at Chaddock. This family was from North Carolina, and we are in Quincy, Illinois. And when they came to Chaddock to drop off their son, they were so scared. They were terrified because just like all of us who have kids or who love kids, the thought of sending him across the country to strangers in the hope that they could make him better, in the hope that their family could get better, was terrifying. But they knew there was nothing else they could do. They knew all of the experts said there was nothing else they could do. They knew that we at Chaddock were his best hope. They, they know that. The therapists know that. People all across the country who specialize in this thing called attachment disorder, what, what we work, what we specialize on at Chaddock, um, they know we really are the best at what we do. A national average of success working with these kids is 35%. At Chaddock, we average between 87 and 93%. We do an amazing job. We work really hard, and we get amazing results because we work really hard, but because I know God is working through us and in us. We are part of the body of Christ. We do ministry every day, and we are part of that body that brings healing and hope to the kids we serve and the families who desperately want to be whole and healthy and secure in their own homes. That graduation day was a celebration of Alex. It was a milestone, a turning point in his life, it was, frankly, affirmation to me and to everyone there that healing is possible when the right people are in place. Healing is possible when God puts you in the right situation with the right help available. We see that. I saw that that day. And just so you all know that, if you've ever questioned whether God is still in the business of healing, I can promise you he is. And whether that's emotional healing like my kids need or physical healing, he absolutely is still in that business. And he has people, he has the body of Christ prepared and ready to help. So as we were around the room that day, as I'm looking around the room that day, Alex was now 10 years old, and his family was standing there ready to take him home. We re I remembered that we made that family a few promises when Alex first came to us. We promised them that we would keep him safe. We promised him we would Never give up on him. We promised them that no matter what he said or did, we wouldn't throw our hands up in the air and say, oh, that one's too hard. Don't know what to do with this one. We assured them that anything that Alex showed us or threw at us, sometimes literally, we would not give up. And we would not back away. We promised them that Alex would receive world-class treatment and care. And the fact that he graduated at 10 years old and is now today back home at North Carolina all excited about NASCAR season is proof that the care that we gave him was exactly what he needed and what that family needed. With your support and with the support of all of our churches, we were able to keep 
our promises to Alex and to his family. And over the years, thousands of children like Alex have left their marks. <laughs> They've left them on our hearts. I'm, I'm so proud of that kid. He is, he's from North Carolina. He is from NASCAR country, and we just talked to him the other day. He is so excited. He left a mark on my heart. He also happened to leave a mark on the furniture <laughs> and on the walls and on the refrigerator and all the places that kids leave their marks. So today, I am asking you, to help us do something at Chaddock that we haven't done in many, many years. Today, I am here to ask your help in something we call transforming spaces and transforming lives, renewing the promise at Chaddock. Chaddock has been around since 1853. We're a 170-year-old ministry, and we have through the years and through thousands of children, really gotten to a place where we need to have some cottage upgrades. Our kids live in the cottages. We have 50 that live with us all the time. And we're at a point where we recognize that our spaces, our cottages, the living rooms and the bedrooms the kids live in don't match the quality of care that we provide or frankly, that they deserve. And so I am going to have a video. It'll help you understand more what I'm talking about. You're going to see a lot of Chaddock's campus on this video. We have a beautiful campus. We have 30 acres right in the middle of Quincy. We have a butterfly garden. We have beautiful spaces at our Knowledge Center and our school. We have historical buildings, but we also have some cottages that are in massive need of upgrade. And so the video will show you better Chattuck than I can. children come from all over the United States, victims of severe trauma and attachment issues. Early years of abuse and neglect have left these kids, our kids, emotionally scarred, unable to form healthy relationships. We promise them and their families that they'll receive world-class treatment for their problems. We promise to provide everything they need for healing including effective therapy with loving staff in a safe, home-like environment. However, thousands of children living in our cottages through the years has taken its toll. That's why we're asking you to financially support our Transforming Spaces, Transforming Lives campaign to help renovate our children's home away from home. New bedroom, living room, and dining room furnishings, flooring, paint, and other improvements will help us fulfill the promises made. Investing in, in furniture, we're really gonna show the kids that we're investing in them as well. You know, the old saying that if you look, things look good, you feel good. We can show our kids that we do want the best for them while they're here. When we started this whole process of looking at the, the milieu, the living environment, we reached out to researchers and talked to them about paint colors, flooring, um, different types of furniture and how it feels, how it looks, and how all of that leads to, you know, um, positive and successful treatment trajectory for the, the kids and the families. Just as we make promises to the children in our care, they promise us to fight every day to overcome the obstacles they have and leave the pain of their past behind them. Our donors really have an opportunity to feed into the, the promise that is our kids, the future that is our kids. They have an opportunity to, to, sure, buy a chair, but so much more than that, it's really providing this sense of value to our kids. I hope you'll support our effort to transform spaces, transform lives, and renew the promise at Chaddock. For more information, please contact the Chaddock Children's Foundation. I love that video because I see so many smiling faces on it and it reminds me why I'm here today. You know, I, I come out and I speak every week. I go to different churches every week and I love what I do. I'm called to preach and I'm called to work with our kids. And it is not the most comfortable thing. I'll just be very honest with you, very vulnerable up here. It is not the most comfortable thing for me to stand up here and say, we need your help. 
we need your help to improve the cottages and to improve the spaces. The reason I do it is because I love Alex. The reason I do it is because those girls that were smiling when they got to us a year and a half ago were so far from smiling. The reason I ask is because I can see every day what an impact Chaddock has on these kids' lives and because I know they deserve the best. They deserve the best of what I can give them they deserve the best of what God can give them. And at Chaddock, we are a Methodist ministry. They deserve the best of what our churches can give them and the people in them. They are smiling today because of the work we do. And I'll tell you something else, and this is not on the script. You can be proud of the work we do. As a part of our ministry, you can be proud of the fact that we are on the forefront of healing these kids' lives and helping their families. You can be proud of the fact that thousands of children have left, gone on from Chaddock, and been successful in their lives. Have left us, they came in broken and they left whole. And it takes a long time to get there. It takes a year and a half to get there. Sometimes it takes two years to get there. But we get there. And they are worth every ounce of energy and passion and love and peace and patience and strength I can give them. They are worth it. And they're worth having new furniture and a new bedroom and a new living room to be excited about. In fact, they are completely excited, and I can't, I'm just going to come out here. <laughs> um, they are excited. They, they kind of know what I do. I work with the kids quite a bit, actually. I, I, that's my heart. I, I've always worked with the kids, so it's one of those things where I'm technically in an admin now, but, but I work with the kids as much as I can. And this is one of the first times in my 11 years there that the kids finally are beginning to connect the dots of what I do. You know, they know I go out and preach, and they know I go to speak to churches, and they know I'm part of the foundation, but that's just kind of a peer for them, for most of them. This is the first time that they're literally, I had a little boy knock on the door in my office the other day, hey, do you know what color my room's going to be? <laughs> I said, no, <laughs> honey, I don't have any idea what color your room's going to be. <laughs> But they're beginning to they get it. They get it. And it's tangible for them. And I'll tell you, it was, it's an opportunity for me to really connect the dots for them. See, I go out and I tell all of you about my kids. This is one of the first times that I've gone, been able to have conversations where I can tell them about you. Say, yeah, we're going to do this. And you know, you know why we're going to do this? We're going to do this. You're going to get your new bedroom. I don't know what color it is, but you're going to get it. Because there are thousands of people that care about you. There are thousands of people that you never know, you will never know, you will never meet. But they care about you. That's why you're going to get a new bedroom. That's why you're going to get a new living room. That's why you're going to get a new space, and we're going to transform these spaces. And I'll tell you what, that preaches to them better than almost anything else I could ever say because they're kids and they need the tangible. So I'm asking for your help. In whatever way you can do it, I encourage you, there's a bulletin insert. Um, there's some things out on the table. If you didn't get one, please look at it. Pray about it. You know, pray about it. Think about it. But I do ask you to help us renew the promise it is at Chaddock. And, you know, the um, going back to Alex, going back to that little guy, and that graduation party, as I was looking around, I, I saw his parents proudly smiling, and they've worked hard. They've, they've stayed the course. 
They've worked hard. I know I work hard. I know the staff in that room worked hard. But no one in that room worked harder than Alex. He worked harder than any of us to overcome the pain that, and everything he'd been through and get himself to a place where he could go home whole. Thank you for what you've already done to help make that happen. And thank you for all that you can do to make that happen for the thousands of Alex's still to come. In Jesus' name, amen.